bringing up something that is so susceptible to that kind of oh. game style. Yeah, and this is this is a hero that we see often banned late in the drafts against Virtus Pro. They, again, they do not have this in their toolkit. Do not want to get cheesed by this. Uh, their lineup is a lot faster. I do like that aspect of the Thunder Draft, but I'm not sure if they have an answer for this Brood. Again, if the lanes collapse, none of that stuff matters. Okay, just a little bit of history here, because the last time they played the Brood was against Vici Gaming at Canavita, and they lost with it. They don't lose a huge amount of brood games, so maybe that's a maybe that's a good sign for VGJ this time around. Uh, well, I know I said I was going to say repeat of Kedavice, and this is potentially a repeat where the one game they're going to lose is with the brood mother. But I'm actually going to upgrade my prediction 3-0 for VP. They're going to close out this series. Wow, very decisive cap. I like that, Jack. The jinx is not working. I'm going to go with uh, my boys VGJ Thunder. I think they'll take the game back here in this series. Okay. We finally got. We finally got him to say it. He's finally <laughs> supported his own team. Uh, as you can see, the analyst predictions on screen right now. Vici J for Jack and Capitalist has gone for Virtus Pro. So they've made their minds up. I'm pretty sure the crowd have made their minds up, but none of us get to make our decision. It's only in the booths where it counts. Let's head back to our commentary team for game number three. Can Virtus Pro close out another major championship? Let's find out. I don't know about you, but this is the first draft I've seen in this series where I actually believe in VGJ as well. Purge, what do you think? I, I think they have some potential good stuff going for them. Um, I, I, on the other side of the, the board, VP's carry is basically a tiny, maybe a brood. Brood doesn't have the best late game. Tiny can sometimes mm -hmm. fall off too, so maybe if VGJ gets uh, later game stages, I could see them having a nice advantage there. Yeah. Yep. For the first time I actually look at it and go, you know what? The Luna didn't have enough space before. She got shut down so heavily. Now, potentially, you can create space. You have VTJ who can have initiators for once. Tuscar as well as Batrider. Batrider with a flying vision. Track down the Broodmother. This isn't just one of these straight fifth pick broods where you're like, I'm not going to be countered. Ramses will have a hard time in this game. There are many heroes that can clean up his spider links. It's just then the question, how's the rest of the team work? Like, we can look at the tiny US prioritized in banning phase. What is his role in this matchup? It's murdering people uh, with help from A, which is going to work really well. I mean, that's the, definitely the one thing on VP side that kind of stands out to me as a big threat against VGJ Thunder. Is that if they do an avalanche toss on somebody, drop a ice vortex on top of that, you're going to see a lot of dead heroes. So a fast blink dagger on no one with VP solo being around with a ice blast means someone will die unless there's a snowball in time. So I, I guess against the Brood, I don't necessarily agree that there are a lot of solutions against him. Like they do have some AoEs and yes, like Batrider can do AoE damage and Tusk can spread the spiders out, but they can't really stop the spiders from running at people very well. Um, maybe kinetic, can kinetic field even work when there's a web up? I'm not sure. but. I think Tusk basically has to sit mid and he has to try to zone the Brood for as long as he can to try to give uh, the Death Prophet a really good start. And if that works out, yeah, things will go okay. But I, st I still have a lot of faith in Ramsey snowballing afterwards. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it's going to happen as the lanes start to settle down. As VGJ. And we'll be having Siler up on the top lane as that Luna. He'll be supported by DDC. He'll be up against the Centaur of Pasha going off lane. The Ramses will then head towards the mid as the Broodmother. He'll be uh, working with Roger to begin with, who's the roaming ES. And then Yang. Into the mid lane as, uh, as the Bat Rider. Then down the bottom, no one. Working with Ancient Apparition Solo and Freeze and Fade uh, will be the last two on that bottom lane. So Centaur is a hero that I am not super confident with, but I think it's actually pretty good this game. Just because they can use him to initiate on some of these uh, team fight heroes, the heroes that are gonna make a difference. DDC oh, getting gone. Rolling bottle, gonna go top. Hope Stomp leveled up his first ability. Suns fan will be impressed as DDC is dropping down low in the trees. Roger will spill the first bluff. They want to keep the pressure on Sila. And with that all but Venom, Sila has to stand close and take it. Hope Stomp is a very good ability. Um, he does have some mana prompts and learning oh, ability. Going stage. again. The rolling oh, boulder, him. another Hope Stomp. Rinse, repeat. This time it's on the other hero of the top lane. Its mana cost is really high, but it does 100 damage and stuns for 2 seconds. So if you have 2 heroes right clicking at this uh, in this situation, it's just such a big advantage. But Luna as well as uh, uh, Disruptor cannot really defend themselves at level 1. It just can't happen, so these fast 2 quick kills are going to be hugely influential, especially if Pasha can get a fast um, Tranquil Boots, maybe even a Vanguard, who knows. There was a small moment too where Fade and Freeze could have comboed together, but no points in Spirit Siphon at level 1. He went Crypt Swarm level 1 instead against no one. And when they got the shard block in, no one could just walk out of it and then back around to his tower. So, 
Virtus Pro. Currently happy with the way everything is going in the lanes, apart from maybe the 10 CS on the Luna. Even though they got the kill on that lane. Fade. Cold feet, he can easily run it off. I think they're fairly happy with what's happening right now. Just give Tiny some levels. As long as Sola doesn't end up dying, everything will be okay. Um, and eventually Ramsey should be able to get a kill on Batrider. Once Firefly runs out, he can just dive. So it's Yang has got to be very careful once this Firefly runs out. Yep. He may also just be pushing the lane out because he got the bottle coming out the courier. So expend everything you've got before the regeneration. Good idea. But he is vulnerable now, and here comes. Oh, he's going for the T battle. I don't think it's going to work. Yang. Oh. What? You knew it was going to wear out. He didn't back up. Uh, uh, the bottle actually weird. ended up getting sent back before the before he even died. I mean, at least if he ran for it, he would have had a, had a running chance, perhaps. But that was that was kind of just accepting death. There. I really don't think he expected to get killed so fast. Doesn't have enough money for a TP, so he's slowly walking back to the mid lane. And Ramses gets the regenerate. Like, oh, not a good situation in the mid lane. Things just escalate quickly when this when this starts to happen. When Broodmother gets more top lane, the rolling boulder, as well as kick Sila. And he's having to burn through so many consumables to stay alive on this top. Pasha didn't even properly commit himself. He was holding on to his hook stomp and double edge. Don't want to burn double edges when it's not going to succeed in a kill usually. Uh, at least until you get enough regen that you'll be able to make it back up. So um, might just, and he's going to go soul ring first actually. This is kind of a good solution. Um, I know one thing Sunspan was talking about backstage that hoof stomp is too expensive mana wise. But this is a strength item that gives you HP regen. That's exactly what Centaur needs. Roger's making his way into the mid lane. Yang's already been Souls and really, bottom. really pressured heavily, and yeah, you're right, with the shards block in, the, the snowball. Attack. Are able to get that the stun, then fade, low on life, a body block from Freeze, keeping no one away, he's got tossed in a couple of seconds time, enough one charges to use it, Yang will die in the meantime in the mid lane, that was that rotation of Roger we were watching before, it was just waiting to work with Ramses. It actually looked like Solo was going to die in that bot fight. Uh, the tiny combo comes in and throws him, but very nicely played by Fade. He pulls him into the snowball before the damage is dealt, so then they got to turn that around, and body blocking secures the kill without a death. But Ramses is just stomping mid now. Two kills, 28 last hits at four minutes. This is yeah. not where you want to be. And basically the only solution Batrider has is using Firefly when he does get pressured. But that's not up all the time. So now Ramses just gets a free lane. Yep. And Ramsey will just start to melt down the towers. He'll start to take over the areas which we're currently watching Yang farming Dyer's at the moment. Like, how is attack. how is this meant to be stopped? Originally, we thought it was going to be the Tusker. We thought that there should be some kind of pressure on Ramsey's, but there was none. Dyer's it's just uh, the, the last pick root here was just so solid. Gave him a really good matchup um, in, in all cases, basically. And Death Prophet doesn't want to lane against it because she's worried about dying. And she oh, rolling ball, they're going in again on Yang. This is going from bad to worse to disastrous. Oh, look at the wards. They're so smart. Just wards constantly surrounding the mid lane in all places. That way they know exactly where Batrider is. And then because they place it behind the tier 2 tower, that means they see the, the Batrider approaching and they get to set up that gank ahead of time. And then they rotate towards the bottom lane. Their own observer wards know that Fade as well as Freeze didn't move off the lane. Fade wants to initiate onto no one. No one has 9-1 charges and the shards don't block him in. So Roger can go to work. They want to kill off Freeze. He's primary target. Fade, snowball protection comes once more. The rolling boulders towards Solo, but then you get the better one from Roger. Hitting into Freeze. Solo will go down as Siler has joined the fight. Then level Three Lucent Beam getting the rebuttal kill onto the Ancient Apparition. Roger might be in the same kind of hurt. The shards hold him in, and Sila will get a double kill with the rotate to bot lane. Super good rotation there. Yeah. But Batrider's about to die. Nope, no, Batrider's about to burn his 40 Batrider's second cooldown Firefly. Yeah. He's safe, dude. And at least he can spread the spiders out. They won't be able to attack as fast that way, but Ramses can still kill the creep wave. They're fighting bottom. Avalanche toss from no one in the trees. Roger's had to keep the extra control and. VGJ thought winning one engagement with VP was like winning a war, but that is never the case. And the cool thing about when no one's doing this game is maxing out Avalanche. It may seem a little weird because the cooldown's much higher, but the damage that gets amplified is actually the Avalanche damage. So you can basically just one-shot people right now. Okay, you're six minutes into the game, Ramses. Six minutes. Just remember this. Six minutes. You've only cracked level seven. I'm only level seven. And he's actually brought both Sila and Yang to the mid lane to defend. Got a medallion already. Like, these heroes don't even have seven armor to begin with. And watch this uh, poor moment. Like, really, are we rubbing this much salt in the wound? We're looking for highlight clips. We can potentially come back live right now as Rolling Ball to kick into Sila forces Fade to TP. <laughs> and they really are having a lot of fun. Fade, he's actually in a world of hurt. The Spiley's doing too much damage. They had the silence as well. 
I don't know if we're now just watching this with audio casting and just the uh, the live reaction from Virtus Pro. Pasha getting glimpsed up on the top lane. Freeze thinks about having a go, but Pasha just TP taunts his way off the top lane. You are seven minutes into this game and the tier three tower has already had a nibble. It was so hard to defend against this. It's going to be a long time until any hero on VTEJ is is prepared to stop these kills. Like, they just need an AoE stun or something to, to stop the chasing, but oh, they got the nothing. Ramsey's is nearby. He can drop an extra web if he wants to. But They're they, actually they, rotating bottom to try and fight, but Roger's in the tree. Sila, the second he shows Radiant's himself, will die. There is nothing that will prevent this. The cold Radiant's feet, the snap, the kicks, the toss around. Actually dodging Roger's stun, and Roger... <laughs> Okay, he's a little bit off target. They turn on the Eclipse. No one cops most of it, but still alive, tosses the tree. It will be a bit of a trade off with Tiny going down. He's worth a hell of a lot more than the rest of EGJ is. But meanwhile, in mid lane, Ramses is just forever knocking on the door, hoping to sell you something. And he killed the Tusk in the meantime. Find him near the uh, the old secret shop, near the fountain, or the shrine, that is. Oh, Yang. And another find. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't care. The he's so die. strong right now. The spiders don't even die, they're gonna regenerate up inside of the web! Man, it's incredible. Very tanky spiders right now. He's almost got his deso finished, which means hitting buildings can be even easier. They've got no clips, so even killing Ramses is difficult. I don't even think it's worth losing beaming him here. This this actually feels more brutal than 27 R. Like this is It does. This this is beyond punishment. VGJ could not shut Ramsey down early. We're gonna, okay, it, really? Really? It's, okay, the next highlight clips will just be a series of Ramsey's murdering people <laughs> some more. They all look the same, right? That they just actually can't do anything to defend against it, and he just runs them down. They're farming in front of their tier three. It's pretty safe here at the eight minute mark. It's not too far <laughs> to run to safety. Eight minute mark, a full desolator on the Broodmother now. Just to. <laughs> That's when minus armor gets the scariest too. When everybody's armor is close to zero, it means you're doing more damage. Silent fade. Who, who wants? Who wants to get away from this one? Go spiders! We don't need no hero. Let the spider army kill. Fade. Defense. Defense. Death. And oh, trouble Ramsey's as well. Up. Ramsey's finally the streak is ended by VGJ Thunder. They fight back. Death to the brood mother. Decent gold swing there, about a thousand. Still losing the Tusk, he's kind of the sacrificial the land. Ball, stampede, they're initiating onto Sila. He's able to get the loser beam off Yang to the neighborhood. Flame break, Sila's still gonna get triggered off by the cold feet, but support is here for VGJ. You'll lose Sila, the freeze, slowing down Roger. His rolling ball is still on cooldown. Solo trapped in by the shards, so Roger will die to the spirit side, and Solo, he's trying to get out of his icy grave. VGJ will stand in the ground with all the sticky napalm charges. Solo just cannot outrun this. Fade will bring him down. They'll find the double damage runes as well, and VGJ will start to relieve the pressure which was building up high. Yeah, these few kills are actually huge. When you're this far behind, any kills that you get just catapult you in terms of levels and farm. They can maybe catch Pasha here. They actually Real do. Real nice shots. Lasso is available too, so Pasha can't just easily run out of this one. He TP support is on the way from, from VP, and it's Roger! Oh. He comes in! He kicks Pasha down! There's no falling oh, They really want no. this kill! Still no Lasso! He doesn't have mana! He's shot by 10! Roger will die the Spirit of Siphon and attack to the Death Prophet while Yang still on the escape solo is damaged. One more attack may be enough for the bottle charges from Yang. We'll keep him alive. The Flame Break to create a little bit more space and he's got it. Yang should be away from this and if Solo wants to keep going after it, Freeze will be happy to kill him. Spirit of is coming back off cooldown in he just a this. second but here comes Randy. The Brood Mother is back. The webs are down and BGJ run to the shrine. Put everything down and run. Oh, you do not want to be near this rude mother. <laughs> Level 5 A is just running at people, dude. He can do whatever he wants because he knows his friends are going to back him up eventually. Stampede is ready for Centaur, so we could see VP go for an initiation here. No blink yet for Tiny, but he's close. So on the top lane, things look normal, at least. Not so much in the <laughs> other lanes, but... The Tiny now has a blink dagger, but it's not even like... like he, can, he can toss the Centaur in before Centaur picks up his own blink dagger to get that stomp they're looking for. That'd be cool. Definitely but, uh, a good uh, solution. But he can also just one-shot people. I mean, True. he's dealing like 700 magic damage with this combo right now. Smoke gang from VGJ is going to come a little bit late. Ramsey's just TP'd back to the tier 1 tower away from the webs with a mid lane solo. Very much stranded. Level 5 ancient apparition running at people will only work when there's a, maybe an army of spiderlings hovering around. He doesn't escape. For, he, 
He's surrounded by four heroes, but they find a better target. There's Ramsey's in mid. Lasso, hold him in position. Spirit siphoned him down. Ramsey's, he is dropping very low, and he can't attack anybody with that insatiable hunger. VGJ perfectly clip. kiting him. And the kills start to come for VGJ and start to repair. I guess not just flatlining the damage, it's repairing the damage. It actually is so effective to have Sticky Napalm against a Brood in this situation because just choosing targets when he's surrounded like that is very difficult for him because he's got to change targets constantly. But because he went mid lane and he, and he dominated so hard, he's always going to be out of position. I kind of feel like he should just switch lanes, take the webs to a different place. No one. He's hunting Yang down the bottom. The Avalanche will connect on all, killing off both the Illusions. And he's still got the tree toss, so Yang, one more punch Jeez. will do it. No one. That Haystrun really going to work. Freeze wants to help and fight, but Haystrun is running out. But the Blink Dagger will bring him back behind the Tier 1 tower into safety for no one. And no one's playing very well right now. Okay, well, Fre they, Freeze needs to force them. They, they finally get to use an Exorcism, at least, to try to take a Tier 1 tower, and they're going to be able to spot Vision with the Sigil oh, here. They want Pasha to jump. DDC is right in the right position. The Ancient Apparition Ice Blast is coming in. They avalanche toss onto Sila. So he drops low. Pasha gets the double hoof stop. But now DDC turns on the ultimate. Pasha and Solo caught inside of this. And they have enough damage. VGJ. Solo will fall. They haven't claimed the tower just yet. No one is waiting for the right time just to pop freeze as he sits in the trees. And here it comes. Avalanche toss Lucid Beam interrupting the swing. They silence and wow. control him. Freeze with the X damage from the exorcism and also the life that was so his ground. so well played by vgj thunder they, they used the luna with a pair of tangos to cut through the trees and at the same time that pasha went in he also spotted no one so they end up initiating on separate targets that would have otherwise been a guaranteed dead hero perfectly playing that out and the raindrops as well and freeze to make sure that the follow-up from tiny just ends up feeding him and now this game's even except yep. for the whole tower advantage thing that vp is abusing their gold is sitting equivalent, and this has got to be a little scary for VP. This kind of reminds me of a Liquid EG, or the third uh, Liquid game from the other day. Now, you can have giggles all around, but this is still a grand final. VGJ still performed very beautifully, even if, if game one and game two didn't look like it. They are a top-notch team, and you've now, you've now enabled them. You've now brought them closer towards that Dragonlands. Okay, well, we can watch uh, DDC potentially die on the bottom lane. It's got a nice blast. This is most likely a kill here. Yeah, Solo gets through the wall, and yeah, okay. They're definitely going to kill him off. But Batrider is Sling Dagger. The Snowball coming after Ramsey. If they can close the distance here, Fade going to Walrus punch him up. There's your lasso. Bringing Randy back in. These are critical kills they need. With the Eclipse, the Spilings will tank through most of it. The Ice so Blast is coming in. Ramsey, he lives on 90 HP. The Flame Break couldn't kill him off. And now Fade's the man on the run. VP. Bringing supplies in so quickly and with the stampede, it's a disengage for the brood and engage for everybody else. It's a good snag, but not enough movement speed on back to pull him out of position. And they tried to eclipse it as well, but there were so many spiders there to tank up uh, Luna Beams. So, Radiant run, Sila. Run. Care. Oh, he gets him! <laughs> no way. Roger! Blinding it! My with God. With the blink hook stomp, they'll take out Sila. And these guys, they're using the force. That is such a next level snipe, dude. This is absolutely a typical place to teleport. Um, kills the creep wave, goes for the teleport just in time, but man, Roger's just a step ahead. So VTJ is going to try to regain some map control in this time period at least. They are forcing VP to run a lot between mid and top lane. Mm -hmm. um, now they're grouped as four. They've got exorcism ready, only level 10 on the Death Prophet, as much as she'd love to have um, a more strong exorcism. But they can still get a kill here. Oh, they don't actually have the lasso for Yang, so this will make it difficult. But when Solo walks into them, things become a lot easier. So Every Ancient Apparition gets sniped, and they didn't have to burn the smoke that's on Fade. Twice. They didn't have to burn lasso either, so... Well, I guess they didn't have it. <laughs> yep, you went down <laughs> before the stop. Once he gets a 4 staff on Batrider, I think ch things change a lot. That's even more reach that they can grab, and they have pretty good map control right now with their wards. They can spot everything um, in the in the middle part of the map. There are some uh, Radiant Wards, but only one that's in an offensive position. Two, I guess. But VGJ... Actually, in this game, something we didn't think would, would really happen. Even if they, yeah. if they actually had an experience advantage for a very short span of time. And they're going to try and get it now with the smoke up. Lasso available, Exorcism available. They would love to get the Broodmother who just found an Invis rune. Detection required. Yang, they actually got him. Pulling back the Broodmother. Need to hold a position. The wall will not do it. 
as now the retreat begins, because the rolling ball, the ice blast kick from Roger on the money. DDC trying to run out this one, but he'll end up shattering. Fade will be unlucky too. The VGJ, at least they get their claws out of this if we look for the silver lining. That's a tough moment if you're the initiator hero there. It feels like I have to take this. This guy's way out of position, but you don't have time to check to see if you have the detection. They're going to try to catch no one. They actually failed the silence here. Yeah, this will be problematic. No one, however, will still go down. They burn Eclipse from Scylla. Absolutely worth it. Good usage. I, I, and I think Yang made the right decision, but what are the chances that there happens to be an Invis rune there and your opponents have no invisibility? Just unfortunate situation there for VTJ, but ultimately, they getting the tiny kill is going to make it worth it, I think. Yep. Death Prophet uh, opting to go for a Rod of Atos this game. Definitely a weird item for, for Death Prophet. Almost always they just go for like Solar Crest, Yules, into the BKB. Oh, she, yeah, she just but... changed. She uh, completely switched to a hood. Okay. And uh, building into a pipe. I think that's reasonable as well, just because of the AA being on the enemy team. The Centaur, I think he's realizing. Bottom lane. Here comes your Ice Blast in. Scylla. And I'll take the damage and all these wonderful 17 one charges are always going to shatter. He's going to shatter in probably one. That's close. Oh, it's like five HP. Very clear. So they turn around the bottom lane. DDC was down there to C. Yeah, that was actually things. five HP. Five, five more damage there and that's a dead hero. Nicely played to get out, but um, the hood I think is needed on the Death Prophet. Her HP is not the, the heaviest. She's gone the magic resistance perk, she's gonna go for the pipe, and once she does that, it just really limits what Tiny can do, what Centaur can do, what Earth. Basically everybody except for like Broodmother right clicks are gonna be heavily negated by this. And any of the amplification that AA is applying with Ice Vortex just becomes not as good when you have magic resistance built up on your hero. They're grouping up once more. This time, no smoke for VGJ. But at the same time, they've deep watered so many of the observed wards of Virtus Perth, they're a little bit blind on the map. So Radiant will scan, Dire will also scan. Can't tell which one's which, but uh, either way, they both didn't actually trigger. So VGJ get their Observer Ward down up on the top tier 1 tower, and they can just push this top lane and force a fight, if this is what they want. Remember it was set 6 minutes, like 12, 13 minutes ago that Ramses was attacking that mid. The pressure hasn't been able to be applied since then for VP. Well, both teams playing a little safe right here. Ramses got the BKB coming, Smoke coming out as well. But neither team has really showed in a moment here. So either checking Roshan, see if that's where VP is at. And I think, I don't know if we saw Vision there or not, but VP is going to move into the Rosh pit at this moment. Yeah, and the shards disappeared from it. They just looked. Sigil's on cooldown for another five seconds, so it'll take time for Fate to bring this down. And with all the scans gone, okay, now they're finally pinging something. The sentries up on the hill, fire five potential from Yang, but it's how, how long? Are they going to wait before they come in close? No one's waiting. They're ready to fight the Avalanche, oh, the Homestone, and the Ice Blast! Perfect synergy from Virtus Pro. They'll bring down three of VGJ and finish what they started, which is Roshan. This is perfectly played by VP there. The Shadow Blade gives them the vision on the enemy team, and it allows Pasha to initiate with a stun on two heroes. Definitely the place that Centaur is valuable is in those AOE stuns, kind of similar to Sand King. It's harder to land because of the delay, and he does have a lot of magic burst but it's hard sometimes from the division. So the, the, the Shadow Blade just facilitating everything there, and they pick up the important initiating of the enemy team, which is Batrider. So guaranteed ages for them, and now VP has a moderate advantage again. And VGJ just knew what they had to do the second they got out of that. So like Luna not being involved, she's pushing in the top. At least the money is starting to arrive. Siler is getting closer towards this BKB after having the, the full Hurricane Pike for the distance. Death Prophet TP to the bottom lane almost instantly as well. Trying to finish up this finish up this pipe, actually give something to to VGJ to fight against this magical pop. It's still so hard though. If you don't have a vision advantage and they initiate first, then yeah, so much less likely that the pipe actually makes a difference. They still have a lot of magic damage on VP side, so stunning two important heroes like that and getting a follow up almost always there's going to be deaths. So they have to initiating first is ideally uh, what VGJ has to go for instead, but it's hard to have the map control. Especially when you're at a gold disadvantage and when they have Aegis as well. They're shifting over though, they do see VTJ with some of their wards, so they'll see if they can get a pick off here. AI splash a little early, expecting him to go for large camp, and yeah, they'll oh, TP. Silas already starting his TP, Roger's kick! Early missing the Luna, that would have been a critical kill, especially as VP possessed the Aegis currently. It would have been a ticket to push high ground. Or if they force buyback, 
Well, a ticket just to delay Silas BKB, which he needs for these fights. And the only thing that made them get that kill was the abnormal Observer Ward, now dewarded here on the mid, uh, near the mid lane. So VP has good control in the mid lane, and BTJ Thunder has no vision at all. Oh, Observer, Sentry, they're just on the run. Sila, Sora coming, and Hurricane Pike away. Roger will get the kick onto the Disruptor. Maybe now they can try and turn Roger. And you see, deciding not to glimpse him because mid lane is under attack. Ramsey's with that Desolator, and BKB brings the tower down to 211, uh, 211 points. The Spiders try and chip a little bit further down. And they just want to jump up. They're, the Spiders are a little low here. They could be killed, but... Ramsey's being careful, he knows the cooldowns. And VP's just looking for initiations. They have to be so careful on BTJ's side, because if he just does like a blink stun and tosses somebody back, that's almost a guaranteed kill. Well, with that said though, they can almost always react with the lasso, so no one also has to be careful. But he's also got grow, so he's got tons of status resistance. That just makes all those disables last less. And so it's just, a, it's just a game of chicken here for VP. Control the map, go for the easy kills that you can. They would love to go high ground with the Aegis, but it's just so much easier to just poke and prod, not take these scary fights against a Batrider. That's the one big advantage that VGJ Thunder has. Yep. The ability to just get that Blink Lasso and then just, like, it's Force and Hurricane Pike, which could be used. I say that yep. once Batrider actually finishes his Force stuff. He doesn't have it yet. Pretty but, close. But these will allow, like, VP to be potentially just dragged out of position. So they're pretty tanky, but still. 23 minutes in. Mm -hmm. I'd say Luna is getting, approaching her, her dangerous point for, for the enemy team at least. Yep. Usually she needs, I mean she kind of makes up for the fact that she doesn't uh, right click the best in the early game with Eclipse. But once she gets another item, she'll have BKB and then maybe one past that is where Luna gets really scary. And even with BKB, because there's so much magic damage on VP's side, it's got to be a little scary. Especially if they don't catch her with the initiation, VP definitely has things to be worried about. I'm liking this from Faith. Uh, he's actually farming up the spiders as they come down the mid. He's almost finished a blink dagger on the task card. This can be critical if Atani is jumping in to try and kill somebody. Faye can just start to like blink in after snowball save and just try and change the tempo of the engagement. Making it a little bit more unpredictable for Virtus Pro to understand how these fights will play out. And as VGJ have shown after what was the, catast the catastrophe early game, their positioning in fights is still superb. I'm just a little surprised that VP is sitting so many heroes in the mid lane. Um, maybe they, they feel like they're going to be more likely to be able to kill the tower, but they're pushing it out enough. Um, and they were doing some split potion with Batrider. VP is not moving across the map to try to counteract that. Just, I feel like they, they're they really trying to make use of this Aegis, and they weren't really able to. They can wait for the next one. The BKB is on the way for no one, so he'll be a lot more protected. Won't worry as much about the Disruptor after this point. A little time left on it, too. I mean, maybe it'll work out here, but... They need to get rid of that Observer Ward. The VGJ is currently under. And here comes the Rolling Boulder. Quick silence onto the Destructor. Yang had the cold feet on him. And he hasn't worked out if he wants to get in or out of this one. Exorcism burned by Freeze. The Avalanche onto Sila, but the Storm is good. But then with the Lasso, they're trying to clip up Randy's and keep him burning. The BKB will give a little bit more life. Finally, the Luna will go down. Pasha jumps on top of DDC, getting the extra control. Rogers is waiting it out, and everyone just magnetized so hard. Fate's finally going to be killing off one, and maybe they have enough damage. VGJ have sustained. They've gone through the Aegis the Immortal, Phase TPL will be successful, and that was a lot more than I thought VGJ was going to get from it. Yeah, I, it looked pretty bad for them too at the initiation, but the, the Stampede didn't catch anybody in the follow-up except for Luna being out of position, and the Great Ward allowed them to engage on that. The Ice Blast landed on Luna, that guaranteed her death. She had BKB there, maybe doesn't go nearly as bad. They're but jumping in. Batrider does not good. have Lasso, but he wants to stop Brandy from getting this bottom tower. Fates nearby, here comes your Ice Blast. Yang, he can't get caught by this, the four stuff. He dodges the Ice Blast. DDC, way too much damage. Ramsey's had the insatiable hunger turn, non ready to fight, and now Disruptor is down for a little bit. Yang is still not ready to fight. But Luna is respawning and Virtus Pro will not force the issue. It just takes so much to kill Broodmother in these fights. It, it has to be like a lasso into an Eclipse, or Death Prophet has to be there up and close, and she did a great job almost getting the kill on the Brood before she fell, but even then it was still only Aegis. Aegis really paying off in that fight. If it turned into a Broodmother kill, very different fight and very different gold swing. Now Brood picks up a Sacred Relic. I, I really don't know which way he's going to go with this one. But probably Nullifier, nullifier. but... Probably Nullifier. I don't think uh, like a Radiance 26 minutes in would make the, the most amount of sense for Ramses. Yeah, it would be the Unless best. he's trying to stop the Batrider from getting any kind of blink, but yeah, there it is. The Nullifier comes up. 
It's good for like a chase down kind of a thing, but the nullifier just allows you to guarantee kills on like Death Prophet, prevent BKBs if you find somebody out of position, yeah. prevent uh, Glimmer Capes, four stats. It's kind of like the anti support item. So for heroes like Disruptor that needs to use items to stay alive in most cases, just shut that down. Yep. But this is when Tuskar is going to have to play even better. So Fade will have to be there for the Blink Snowball. Go for the save. Waste that item of the Broodmother. Waste their initiation. It could be good, but it's still so scary. Because there's always going to be Ice Blast follow-up. There's going to be Centaur jumping in. There's also Earth Spirit. There's a lot of danger. Well, Silas actually going to go for a Butterfly as his next major item. I was wondering if he'd actually think about going in for... Like, just, just Manta for the pure D-push kind of factor. It's not that great. I mean, it's it's good for split pushing, not so much about being able to push creep waves by yourself, I guess. Um, and the illusions are easily cleared by all the AoE that your, your opponents are dealing with. I mean, it would be nice to remove silence, to remove the, the brute passive, potentially. Yep. But Butterfly is just on, on top of all else, just makes you very physically survivable while also giving you a lot of damage. So it's a good mix here. If she gets BKB off, she's very unlikely to die. Unless she gets bursted low before the BKB. But that's when Saving Grace will have to be there. VGJ will look to be the initiators instead. They've got detection this time around. They're going to have the gem of True Sight. Uh, everyone's grouped up, but I'm not seeing any smoke on anyone right now. So they cannot do this under any kind of cover. Max and then, picked up on yeah. Centaur. He's been, he's been pushing that for a while. Now when he presses his ultimate, everyone will be Broodmother on the enemy team. <laughs> or on his team, then. Run over the cliffs, chase down your opponents. Connect field feels like... How do you land Kinetic Field on like five heroes now? They're just going to be <laughs> all over the place, like the map is empty. You wait inside your base for the choke point. That's, that's what you do. This thing lasts for four seconds. Eclipse lasts for six seconds. You can stop Eclipse damage. You can stop anybody that's in trouble. Keep them uh, more resistant to damage. I love that from Ramsey's just then. He, uh, like, so he had his big group oh, they, oh, they jump in. No one got the BKB off there. Just Snowball protection. We're talking about for the double hot stop. Pasha, he got the back lines with the Ice Blast too. BGJ, they were waiting for the perfect fight. This is not it. Luna dies right in front of her own tier 3 tower. Freeze, he's on the back side trying to work with Yang. A four stuff away won't happen. The spawns finally reach him. And now Freeze will go down too. BGJ are all dead. And you know where VP are going? Into the mid lane. Buybacks are coming. It's all or nothing. They got the defender. final game. They don't have exorcism, so it's going to be very difficult to defend, but maybe Tusk can make a difference here. Killing spiders is the first part. Killing the creeps, let the tower hit the Broodmother or the other heroes, but the tower is not long for this world. Yep, it's already gone. Ramses with that initiation can work right on top. There, Spade. Fantastic save. Buy some space. They full stop him up, but with that bloody amplified urn, it's just impossible to get back out again. The Spirit Vessel just makes it impossible. He can dispel with Yule, so he ends up staying alive, but that was mm -hmm. very dangerous. The melee Rax is gone. So, huge amount of buybacks force out of VGJ. The economic advantage will now shoot through the roof, and we'll get to see that initiation once more. So, no one got in, and then this hoof stomp into the back line. There was just no support that could come. So, I lost way too much HP at the beginning of the fight. Ultimately, it was VP that gets to initiate first. And all their damage dealers, with the exception of the Death Prophet, got picked off. Did Soul even live to? Okay, no. he does end up dying at least, but at that point, way too much damage. He gets stunned by Cold Feet, and that is just a dead Death Prophet. So, BGG Thunder is pretty much on the edge right here. If they die right now, with these buybacks previously being used, that's got to guarantee all the Raxes. <laughs> This is the only choice now for VGJ. Firefly will go on cooldown. They've got an illusion rune into the bottle of Yang. So scouting Roshan is possible. We'll see how Virtus Pro want to react. For the moment, they're hiding under the cover of the smoke. Thanks to the fact that Observer Water, the Dire Side, got attacked by the, by the Radiant, uh, Radiant Creep. VGJ knows that something is a little bit suspect. They did get the D wards are placing sentries everywhere to try to make sure there weren't wards. That's why they lost the last fight. Observe ward in a place they hadn't spot. spotted yet. Mm -hmm. So now they're still grouped as five. They know a team fight is the only way to get back into this, oh. the only way to not get outganked. Solo just burned his ice blast, looking for a good target, so they won't have that for the next 30 seconds. So a small window. These little spiders. For some dude. kind of advantage. What else is what else can Yang get? Like Yang is watching. But he's he's got Firefly up, takes to the air. 
They just try and get rid of the spiders, but there's your jump in. A nice four star for Wei. Yang avoiding the initiation of Virtus Pro, but no one just turns back in the fight. The avalanche toss. Where are these BKBs? It won't really matter because you got so much damage from Virtus Pro. They are immune. They are warriors, and they're looking to bring down Freeze. He's a big one to claim. No immunity left anymore. They just keep pumping into him. No one's got the distance, even with the tree toss. They can't get that. And GG, well played. Virtus Pro claim yet another major title. And they did it in more than convincing fashion. It was a slaughter in this grand final. And honestly, this didn't look that different from the previous major, where they absolutely trounced Vici Gaming. They ended up winning that one only 3-1. to one. But this one was even more one-sided somehow. Like, VP look absolutely unstoppable right now. Yeah, they really do. This is a fantastic team. Such depth, such quality of the entire team. You do wonder, like, how does anyone beat these guys? They can draft anything. They can play any tempo. They can do cheesy brute and other stuff if needed. And it doesn't even look cheesy. It just look easy. It does. It does. The easiest thing for him is to pick up the trophy as well. So this awesome crowd here in Bucharest, they can actually greet their PGL Dota Major Champions. Let's give a huge round, guys. Virtus Pro, they are your champions.